You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Thank you for joining me here today on our Weight Loss and Wellness Wednesday. We're going to take you through the only two causes for inflammation. So right now, there are a lot of books, there are a lot of diet plans, and there's certainly a lot of health advice on how to reduce inflammation. But what I want to tell you right now, and I've spoken about this in the past, is that inflammation is not the enemy. And I know that's going to sound kind of strange because we're always talking about all of the different herbs such as turmeric or curcumin or ginger, any of these different things that we can do to reduce inflammation in our body. And of course, we have a society and culture of people who are addicted to things like Advil, ibuprofen, aspirin, Tylenol, or any type of actual pharmaceutical drug to reduce the pain, to reduce the inflammation they have in their body. And so we look at inflammation and we understand that it's something that we don't necessarily want, but the problem is we're thinking about inflammation in all the wrong ways. We're looking at it as inflammation as something that's gone wrong in our body. And that's really the problem because although yes, inflammation is at the core of almost every disease known to man, it's not the disease itself. So for us to treat inflammation, we're missing the whole point. We're missing the fact that inflammation is still just a symptom of something deeper. And we'll talk about that today. What I'd like to say, though, is this, is if you look at inflammation and you really look at its core, you're saying, well, why does the body get inflamed? It can only get inflamed for two reasons, all right? And those two reasons is what we're going to discuss here today. But it's always from an immune-based response, no matter what that reason is. So if that inflammation happens... And we know it's that it's because if there's some type of internal assault within the body by the immune system, we have to ask ourselves, is the immune system becoming dysfunctional? You know, why is it causing all this inflammation? And my question would be, not why is the immune system causing all the inflammation, it's why is the immune system turned on so high in the first place? So now let's get right into those two reasons of why you can become inflamed or another reason for why your immune system is at such an exaggerated response. So the first reason is plain and simple, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. When you get an acute injury, such as, let's say that you fell on your hip or you fell on your shoulder or you fell and hit your head and it swells, we're seeing inflammation. Let's say you were running and you tore your hamstring or you were weightlifting and you were using the proper form and trying to press a lot of heavy weight over your shoulder or through a barbell bench press, and you tore or partially tore a rotator cuff. So what you're looking at here is you're looking at, okay, one of the muscles within the rotator cuff got partially torn. Now I'm getting this inflammation. Why am I getting this inflammation? Well, here's why. Again, the body didn't mess up. What happened was you got an actual injury and you fell or you hurt yourself, whatever it might have been. But the immune system now is going to do its job. The area is inflamed because the white blood cells are there to do cleanup. There is damaged tissue. That tissue, that waste from that tissue as well needs to be removed. There also needs to be a healing process, and that brings the warmth, that brings the white blood cells, and that also brings the nutrition to that part of the body so that it can repair using amino acids and other biochemical things that are needed for the body to actually go through tissue repair. So I'm not going to get into all of those things today because that's not today's lesson. Today's lesson is talking about inflammation and really what it is and really what it's not as well because we're looking at it as something that it's bad. It's not a bad thing. It really isn't. I like inflammation in the body. Here's why. One, inflammation helps to do a lot of things. It can help to reduce cancers, tumors, growths. A lot of things in the body. It helps repair the body. But it also, it's a symptom for me. So when that someone's in my practice working with myself or they're working with one of my health coaches, and they say, I have this, this, and this symptom. I say, great, let's not mask that. Let's not mask it. 
And here's why. Once that inflammation starts to go down and we're not medicating it, once it starts to go down, we know we're on the right track. The body is healing from the inside out. And so now when those symptoms reduce, we know that the body's getting better. But if you're always taking the pharmaceutical drugs or the Advil or any one of those things to mask those symptoms, to bring it down, again, we don't know if you're getting better or not because you've masked those symptoms. Okay, so the reason number one for inflammation is an acute-based injury. Those will heal. No doubt about it, that will heal in time, but of course, you should be doing those proper things. The big one I want to talk about today is chronic inflammation due to immune imbalance. Okay, so I like to break this down, make it really simple. Two causes of inflammation. One is from a fall. The second is from food. So we call it fall or food. And now what I mean by that is this, of course, not just about food, but that's the first one I always go with and it's typically gut-based. Okay, so let's think about our really chronic inflammation-based issues. So let's think about migraines. Let's think about rheumatoid arthritis. Let's think about Hashimoto's. Let's think about inflammation in any way in the body, MS. Think about any of those specific things, all characterized by inflammation, all autoimmune disease really characterized by inflammation. Skin-based issues, psoriasis, eczema, absolutely an inflammatory-based issue. Same with rosacea. So when we're looking at these specific things, we have to say, okay, well, yeah, they're characterized by inflammation. So now that we know, really, beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is scientifically proven through conventional medicine as well, not just naturopathic medicine, which, by the way, they're pretty much one of the same when it comes to research. Naturopathic medicine doesn't use separate research from conventional medicine. We all use the same because our goal is to see what works in functional medicine, which is a combination of everything, to help the end end patient. I mean, that's basically the bottom line. So we know that 90%, I mean, really it should be 100%, but 90 plus percent of all autoimmune issues, and that can include psoriasis and skin issues as well, all autoimmune, all chronic-based issues are stemming from some type of gut-based issue. Now, typically it's referred to as leaky gut or intestinal permeability, but it could be other things as well. It doesn't just have to be intestinal permeability. It can be inflammation in and around the 28 feet of digestive tract. And why is this kind of the culprit in so many of these diseases? The reason is this, is that 80%, minimum of 80% of all of your immune system, immune cells, all those things are located around your gut wall. So we're looking at an IgA, IgM, IgG, IgE response. Those are all your immunoglobulins. Okay, these are your basically white blood cells that are going after foreign invaders in the body. We call them antigens, and the antibodies are there to kind of clean up those antigens, those pathogens that swim around your body. Well, I mean, if you think about it, if you're eating foods and proteins and incompatible foods, they're coming into your gut. Well, your immune system has the first shot at them. It gets, it gets to try to remove them from your body. But think about this. Let's say you do have intestinal permeability. You do have leaky gut because you've had alcohol before. You've taken birth control. You've taken antibiotics. You've taken Advil. You've taken all these different things. You've had stress, right? So what happens is in susceptible people, which is basically everyone just to varying degrees because we're all born with this, is that that gut wall can start to open up. And when it does open up and we start to get this bacteria or yeast or parasites or anything else coming into our bloodstream, which is connected right next door to our gut, our intestines, well, the immune cells are right there to clean up. Now, keep in mind, if they're doing this every time you eat, well, that's going to cause an exaggerated immune response. It's part of the reason why the Dr. Bell Detox and a lot of other detoxes, but Dr. Bell Detox specifically because it uses phase one and phase two nutrients to help your liver cleanse your blood works so well. It's not magic. There's no magic. There's no marketing or magic to it at all. All it does is allow you to clean up your blood faster without an assault from new types of foods coming in. Plain and simple. That's why it works. That's why it's been proven to work. But what are we really talking about with this chronic inflammation? So if we know chronic inflammation is the number two, so the number two is Food or fall, right? We are already talking about the fall. You fell down and got an acute injury. Well, the food part is you're eating foods and you're sensitive to them. I'm going to go through all the different reasons right now. Okay. So you're eating foods and you're sensitive to them. When you eat foods, like a lot of people eat eggs. Now, eggs can be very healthy for you. Okay. If you're vegan, of course, you're not choosing to eat eggs. But if you're vegetarian, you may be eating eggs. And if you're paleo, you're probably eating eggs or they're going into a lot of recipes. Here's the issue. Yes, they can be a health food. They can contain a lot of nutrients that you might want to get into your body. Some people may not want them for various reasons, but let's talk about the people today who are eating them. So for those people, think about this. 
Egg whites are really the number two food sensitivity from an IgG perspective that I see every day in my practice. I run as many food sensitivity tests as any other practitioner, I would say, in the world. I run a lot of food sensitivity tests online as well as in my private practice. So here's what I find though. Not, I mean, this isn't everybody, of course, but some people are sensitive to egg whites. So now you're eating these healthy eggs that you believe are healthy, right? And you're usually like throwing the yolk away. Sometimes you're like, oh, well, I don't want the cholesterol or anything like that, which I'm not recommending because that's where the nutrition is. But let's say you're just, you know, you're eating a whole egg or eating the whites. You're getting the sensitivity. You might have an actual immune-based reaction and you may not know about it because this is from an IgG perspective, which means that your body is having a reaction to the eggs 24 to 72 hours later. And how does that show up? Well, it can show up as skin rash, it can show up as low mood, it can show up as low energy, low libido, brain fog, joint pain, migraines, headaches, any number of things, exacerbation of any symptom that you do have. Because what happens? It causes inflammation. You can simply test that by running a food sensitivity test. Now, I'm not going to link to everything right now in the show. I, I don't think that that's appropriate. What I want you to do is just go to stephencabral.com forward slash 586. If you go to stephencabral.com forward slash 586 today, you will get links for every lab test I'm going to talk about, every single lab test, the same ones I run in my practice, the food sensitivity test, and the next one. So let's talk about this. A big reason for inflammation is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It's indicated in IBS and many other disorders. Now, people come in with IBS. They say to me, like, is that even a real thing? Well, I say, yes, IBS is a real thing. It stands for irritable bowels. You have irritable bowels. That's literally what it means. And we usually just laugh back and forth because you were just given a diagnosis called irritable bowel syndrome. And the silly thing is you're like, well, I didn't really need to go to a doctor to have me told my bowels are irritable. I know they are. I get bloating. I get cramping. I have constipation or I have diarrhea, any number of these things. Nobody needs to be told that, right? So it's a silly diagnosis. It means absolutely nothing. But again, we're just characterizing symptoms, irritable bowels. Well, what does it really mean? Well, it probably means that you have some type of bacterial overgrowth, or if you don't have an overgrowth, you at least have what's called dysbiosis, more bad bacteria than good bacteria or an out of balance, or you may have yeast overgrowth, some type of yeast, some type of fungal-based overgrowth, some type of candida. These things are well-established now. These are not naturopathic. These are, these are conventional medicine-based. They use Diflucan. They use Nystatin all the time. These are very popular drugs. The problem is if you don't have a protocol that works, it just keeps growing back. That's the issue. Everybody knows this now. Like The only people who don't know this are people who just don't keep up with the research. So again, like if you're going to a physician, again, many great physicians, but many are not that great. And that's, that's just the truth. But that's the truth in any profession, right? So, so many amazing MDs, DOs, naturopathic doctors listening to the raw concept. They know all this. And they don't want to be characterized by a lot of their colleagues who just say like, oh, well, there's no such thing as this. There's no such thing as that. Well, there is. They just, they graduated 20 years ago from medical school and they just haven't been taught this. So they don't do any continued education. They don't study functional medicine. They just kind of stick with their pharmaceuticals, which is fine. But if you want more out of life, you have to look for a practitioner who can give you more. That's essentially the bottom line for any industry at all. Okay, let's move on to our next one. So actually, let me just, one more thing about that. So if you have IBS, you have any symptoms like that, and you have inflammation, you know, you're starting to hold water around your middle section, you, your belly looks bloated, and it looks like you're gaining weight, but you know, sometimes when you wake up in the morning, it's flatter. Well, that's a really good sign that you have some type of gut-based issues, and that's causing inflammation, right? I'm going to wrap this up at the end, but I, w- I want to just kind of go through my list right now. So what would you run for that? You'd run an organic acids test. Plain and simple, you do a small urine sample when you wake up in the morning, you mail it into the lab, we get your results or your doctor gets your results and they give you your results. They give you a plan if they know a plan of how to fix that. Uh, The next one I always like to say is, well, what if you have parasites or what if you have H. pylori? If you don't do a stool test, how do you ever find that out? Now, if you don't find it out, that's okay, but you should then run a parasite protocol because another reason for inflammation is if your body has parasites, or if it has this bacteria, one, you're not digesting your food well enough. So here's the thing. If you have H. pylori and you're eating proteins and then just sitting there and putrefying your stomach, or if you have acid reflux because of it, now you're taking Prilosec or some type of proton pump inhibitor. Well, here's the issue is like, you're not breaking down your proteins. You're not absorbing your food. You're not absorbing your calcium, your magnesium, your zinc. So if you're not getting those nutrients, well, then your body's just slowly deteriorating. And that's my real issue with giving these acid reflux drugs. They're a real problem. They are a legitimate, real problem, and they are decimating people's digestion. 
So if you run a stool test, and it's the only way, you can't run a blood test and you can't do a breath test for H. pylori because it can show a false negative because it may not be active at that point. But if you've been eating food and you take a stool test and you run that over three days, you're going to find out if you have H. pylori. And then if you do really simple, natural ways to get rid of that as well as if you want, you can do conventional medicine ways too. It's always your choice. Stool test. I'll link everything up today in the show notes. Just go to steengrubal.com forward slash 586 for that information. And again, do with the information what you feel is best for you. But I at least want to arm you with the information because if you don't have the information, you can't make any change. And if you can't make a change, you're not going to get any better. If you don't get any better, then you're going to suffer like this literally for the rest of your life. And I know that because I spent a decade of my life suffering. So if I can ease yours and cut it down from five years, if you've been dealing with it for that long, some people come to my practice, been 30 years as well, even longer than I had to deal with it. I feel really bad for them. But I say, hey, you know what? Yeah, it was bad 30 years. Let's fix it now though. So you can enjoy the next 30 years of your life. The last one is this. When your nervous system is inflamed, now this is going to sound a little strange. Your nervous system is inflamed. It can also cause an immune-based response. Now, how does that happen? Okay, this is really interesting. And and this is important for, we'll just call us all us regular people as well as practitioners as well. So here's the deal. When you are very stressed and you are outputting a very high level of cortisol, okay? So you're up there called glucocorticoids. Your body is not functioning properly. You're actually slowing down what's called the parasympathetic nervous system, the healing branch of the immune system. And your immune system on one branch, your secretory IgA, so it's immunoglobulin IgA, that's the first line of defense. That's the mucosa around uh, like your nasal passages, your eyes, your your mouth, your throat, all of those different things. And that's another way that you can block viruses. So now all of a sudden you can allow viruses into your body like you haven't ever before, which then causes its own immune-based response. But that stress, that cortisol as well, in and of itself causes inflammation. It can decrease testosterone, decrease DHEA, decrease progesterone. We're looking at a really vicious cycle that lowers your immune system and leaves you now more susceptible to digestive issues, nervous system issues, and all sorts of immune-based imbalances. So here's the thing. What I wanted to leave you with is this, and I don't like to take more than you know about 20 minutes of your time on a daily basis, and I really do appreciate you tuning in each and every day because every day I just want to give you a little bit more a little bit more information. I can't teach it all in one show, right? That's not possible, but a little bit each day. So here's the thing. Inflammation is not a disease. Inflammation is not something to be dealt with for the long term. I have no problem if you want to take anti-inflammatories. So if you want to use some ginger, you want to use some turmeric, great, absolutely. You know, Because those are great for so many different things, digestion, gut health, all sorts of different things. But don't do it to lower your symptoms. Don't do it to lower your symptoms. Do it to live longer, but not to lower your symptoms because inflammation is not a dis-ease of the body. It's not a disease with quotes around it. It is a dis-ease, meaning like your body's out of ease. But here's the thing, it's a symptom. So whenever you have inflammation, I simply want you to ask this. I want you to ask yourself this. Why do I have inflammation? And I want you to ask your doctor that too. Okay, you have inflammation. Say, oh, well, you know, it could be genetic. Genetic? It's not genetic at all. Sure, you can have genetic predisposition because of MTHFR issues, which again, if you don't know what those are, it's, that's okay. But basically, your body can't process, can't deal with inflammation as well. But you still have to get that inflammatory assault in the first place, right? So again, the MTHFR-based gene and as well as other genes can be a catalyst for inflammation. And I have those myself, so I know all about them. And I know that if you're suffering from it, I understand that it's a little bit more challenging. However, once you get your nutrition in check, once you get your immune system balanced, you're able to handle that no problem at all. So here's the thing. It's not genetic. Genetics, they account for such a small range of things. It doesn't even, it's not even funny. Meaning like it's, you're predisposed to those things. Yes, but you have to be the one to allow those genes to unlock for that expression. So I want you to say to yourself is this, okay, I have inflammation. No, no problem. That's my symptom. So why then do I have the joint pain, the headaches, the skin issues, the brain fog, the lower energy, the low libido, the bloating, the gas, the constipation, the loose stool? Why do I have those things? That's what you ask is why? And if you can go then and you can keep asking why, eventually you're going to figure out what it is. Is it gut-based? Is it stress-based? You know, what is it? You have to figure out what that underlying root cause is. And sometimes there's more than one. And when you start to do that, you unlock your potential. You actually begin to see for the very first time how you can heal. And if you know then how you can heal, then it's just about doing the work. That's all it is. 
It's about using the proper nutritional supplements or running the lab first, whatever it takes. That is my recommendation. So let me just leave you with my recommendation because again, I could go on forever. So I want you to do this. If you believe you have some type of food sensitivity, you have skin issues, those types of things, and you want to test your food, I highly recommend that. It's such an easy test. It's a simple blood poke of the finger at home. We have kids do it as young as six months old, and we have our oldest clients doing it as well. So everyone in between, that's a very simple one, food sensitivity test. The second one is for yeast. It's for candida. It's to look at your energy, to look at your B vitamins, it's to look at your detoxification levels, all of those things. It's an amazing test. That's called the organic acids test. Simple urine test done right at home. The stool test is for parasites and H. pylori. Do you believe you have parasites? Do you believe you have H. pylori? Do you get acid reflux a lot? Do you get bloating right away in your stomach after eating right away? You get night sweats, any of those things. Test for parasites. What about acne You know, on, the, on your back, or your neck, and you're an adult? Check for parasites. That's a stool test. Really simple. Do that at home as well. And the hair tissue mineral analysis for an exaggerated stress response. Lowered mineral levels. Maybe you have heavy metals as well. That will show that. That's an amazing test. Very few people know about that. And that's because it's not taught in school. None of these tests are taught in the school. These are additional labs that you really have to, as a practitioner, study after you get out of school. So hair tissue mineral analysis, a couple snips of hair, send it right in the lab. Remember, we get all of your results back. You don't need to do anything. You just take the sample, it gets sent to the lab in a prepaid mailer. We get your results. I review your results personally. I review every single person's results online that come in through me. Then you speak with one of my amazing health coaches, Julia or Caitlin, to go through your results. And then they give you the plan that the health coach and myself have talked about. Again, they're amazing in their own right. They don't even need me a lot of times to give that, but I check over every single lab. I make sure everything is how it's supposed to be. And then you get the plan and then you work the plan. You find out these underlying root causes and then you get well. That's really what it's all about. It's about first giving the information. So that's what today is all about. Second is you deciding on what labs you may want to run. Third, getting the plan and then eating the proper foods for you, right? For you, taking the proper supplements for you. You get all that information more personalized for you. But all I want you to do is this, is have the information, figure out what's going to work best for you, take the action, and really start to take back control of your health and your life. I honestly believe if you don't have control of your health and your body, it's tough to really enjoy life to the fullest. I'm speaking from experience, and I'm saying to you right now, you can work with a health practitioner in your area, your local area, through Skype, whatever you believe is best for you, but I believe that you have to start taking control of your health not only for you, so that you can get well, and then you can also be better for other people. When you feel great, you are at your best then to help serve others. Thank you everyone for tuning into another Cabral Concept. Really appreciate each and every one of your listens. Thank you very much. And again, as always, if this show could help anyone else you know, please feel free to pass it along to them. Ever wonder what the best sauna, blue blockers, sleep trackers, wake lights, salt lamps, or other health gadgets are? Or what about the top non-toxic mattresses, sheets, soaps, bath products, toothpaste, and cookware? Or would you like to know the cleanest choices for hemp hearts, meal delivery services, supplements, and much more? I personally curated, researched, and now created a resource page of all of my top picks that continues to grow each week. These are the exact products I use in my own life, with my family, in my private practice, and they're the ones I trust. To find out all of my up-to-date recommendations and all the details, simply head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash resources.